The invasion of land by backboned animals in the late Devonian and Carboniferous periods was a landmark event in the history of life, classically depicted as the gradual evolution of land-loving adaptations by early tetrapod animals. Over the last 30 or so years, plenty of new fossil discoveries, revised anatomical interpretations, updated evolutionary relationships, and new techniques and methods have been able to reveal previously unrecognized anatomical features of all sorts of early four-limbed backboned animals as they transitioned from water to land. These studies have been able to overturn many earlier ideas of the orderly, stepwise sequence of the evolution of terrestrial adaptations, how important these adaptations were, and the role they played in the invasion of new ecologies of the landlubbers. Easily one of the most bizarre and mysterious of the early stem tetrapods, the backboned, four limbed animals, was the tiny limbed, paddle tailed, crocodile like Crassagarinus. Though these early animals were amphibian like in some ways, they are far enough removed from most living amphibians that it's not helpful to even refer to them in amphibian like terms. You can learn the full story of Crassicorhinus in my video on it, link in the description and comment section below. But in short, the first specimen found was a flattened upper jawbone found in 1930 Scotland. The problem here was that it was interpreted as not being particularly crushed. In other words, it was mirrored onto the other side of the skull and the whole noggin was reconstructed as an unusually short and tall one. Over the almost centuries since then, pretty much the entire skeleton of the animal is known, but the skull is still hard to interpret. A brand new study published in the Journal of Vertebrate Paleontology by Laura Poro, Emily Rayfield, and Jennifer Clack, rest in peace, and also look at that, an all-woman team, you don't see that very often, very cool and based I think, used micro CT scanning tech and digital software to repair and rearrange bones to get a better understanding of what the hell the noggin of this animal looked like for real. You see, despite a good handful or so of skull specimens from Crassicorhinus, they're all flattened and crushed in one direction or another, and sometimes in all directions. So, the team scanned a bunch, repaired them the best they could, and fit them all back together digitally. Thanks to new tech, a lot more and much finer detail was able to be scanned from the bones. After all that was done, the team was left with this 3D skull model a skull that is far flatter than any previous reconstructions. The three sets of fangs that hang down from the palate or the roof of the mouth point well below the bottom border of the skull. This new flatter skull is due to a much wider palate bone or the roof of the mouth than previously thought with a much narrower chunk of bone between the eyes. The sides of the skull that had been traditionally reconstructed as flat and tall must be at more of a 45 degree angle in order for it to physically move with the roof of the skull and the roof of the mouth. What does this mean for the animal though? There is an interesting hole called a fenestra in between the bones called the premaxillae. Those are the ones that make up the front of the snout. One older explanation was that the hole was the entry point for the tusks of the lower jaw to sit in when the mouth was closed. However, alternate explanations also include a salt gland, nasal epithelium, rostral organ, or a sensory organ such as a vomeral nasal or Jacobson's organ. The sensing Jacobson's organ hypothesis does seem to be supported by the fact that the big external hole also connects to a pair of holes in the roof of the mouth that therefore also open into the mouth itself, as in reptiles that have Jacobson's organs. This would greatly improve the animal's sensory capabilities while submerged in the murky coal swamps of Carboniferous Scotland. The new profile of the skull overall more closely matches the skulls of crocodiles, which serendipitously fits better with the rest of the animal's body and proposed life habits of ambush predation. This also happens to agree with a more recent analysis and description of the skeleton of Crassicorhinus, which found that the ribs did not stick downwards, but outwards. 
It had a big flat body to go with its big flat head. It is simply not escaping the crocodile allegations. The holes of the lower jaw, through which muscles passed to deliver the bite stuff, were massive. This pretty much indicates that the animal probably had a whopper of a bite. Nigel Marvin was lucky. So that's about it. The results of the new study supplement and amend previous descriptions of Crassicorhinus, including a bunch of new info on the skull's true anatomy and a detailed description of the jaw joints and the connection between the tips of the jaw. CT scans and 3D visualization allowed the team to three-dimensionally reconstruct a more accurate skull, showing a flattened shape aligning with the updated understanding of the entirety of the animal and how it fits into the evolutionary tree of early tetrapod animals. Evidence from skull anatomy, sensory systems, tooth size, shape and distribution, sutural morphology and the shape and orientation of the jaw joint and mandibular symphysis are used to predict the feeding mechanism and ecology in this unusual stem tetrapod. Hypotheses that will be tested further using biomechanical modeling. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, like this video, drop a comment in the comment section below, and hit the bell icon to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to Elephant Tier patrons Abby Smith, Arda Bayer, Biotiverse, Cherry Shaw, Chris Frampton, Christoph Hubbinger, Dinosaur, Ed Peretz, Isaiah Garza, Jax the Hacks, Natty Cat, PA Brew News, Ray, Rudy Redgrave, Smiling Walrus, Staniforth Hopkins, Steve Bradshaw, Thea Svensson, and Extraterrestrial. As well as my top as tier Tyrannosaurus patrons Admin, Antron, Aphid Kirby, Cyber, Dana Manchester, Danny Van Hen, Henry Brennan, Iberospinus, Iron Bladesman, Joshua Mana, Panic, Radio 404, Robert Kessler, Ruben Zachariah, Swaffles is Weird, Teeny Dragator, and The Dogman.